Hey, church family, thank you again for joining us for today's Daily Connection video right in the middle of the week. Uh, I hope that you have been plugging along with us and Brother Brent as we have looked at the character of Christ, seeing how we should reflect that character to a lost and dying world. Uh, and a big part of doing that is being obedient, right? And so we're going to take a moment and look at uh, just radical obedience that Christ had uh, for what the Father called him to do and kind of see how we need to uh, how that how we need to mimic that in our own life. So let's look at uh, Philippians chapter two. We're going to look at the last part of verse seven and then all of verse eight. Last part of verse seven. We're going to start with uh, and it says and when he and when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Oftentimes when we think about obedience, we think about our children, right? We think about our students. I think about students. Maybe you have littles and you think about their, think about your littles and maybe you are, are older and your children are grown. You think about your grandkids or you think about times when maybe your kids weren't so obedient. I'm sure that that's what my parents would think about. Uh, and, and when we think about that, we think about cleaning our room, being home before curfew. But the reality is we all struggle to be obedient at times in our lives, right? We struggle to be obedient in wearing our seatbelt or, or, or running uh, uh, or rolling through a stop sign or, or going faster than those little white signs that give us some limitations, if you know what I'm talking about. And there are other areas that maybe we're uh, disobedient uh, in our lives. Uh, oftentimes traffic uh, issues are ones that we think of. Regardless, being obedient takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes some, it takes intentionality. It's not something that just happens. We have to choose to be obedient. I think we see a perfect picture of obedience in Jesus. Imagine uh, being, living, and reigning from a throne in heaven, yet Jesus uh, was obedient to the Father, and he gave up heaven to come to earth. Furthermore, giving up the perfect fellowship he had with the Trinity to come to earth just to be rejected. All of that to be obedient to the Father. He, he, he lived in humility. Jesus' humility is, is this perfect picture of his obedience to the Father. And, and those were not even the greatest examples of his obedience, not even the greatest examples of his humility. The greatest examples being his willingness to, to, to be obedient to death. And then as this passage says, death on a cross, right? This is a, a vile death, a, a death that, that is, is, is shameful, that people would ridicule him even greater for. Yet this is what he was willing to do. And why was he willing to do that? Why was he willing to become sin? Uh, he was willing to become sin for us, to pay a sacrifice for us because he loves us and because the Father has called him to do so. And he was obedient to the Father. Just like Christ has been called to be obedient to the Father. He is literally the Son of God, part of the triune God. Just as he must be obedient to the Father, you and I should be as well. Uh, his word has clearly laid out what it looks like to be his followers, what it looks like to be his children. The question we have is, will we be obedient to his word? Will we be obedient to his callings? Our author gives us a couple of questions to look at. The first is, why is obedience sometimes difficult? I think that, man, the, the easy answer is heart idols, right? It's our flesh. It's our desires, right? But take a moment, walk through that question. Why is obedience sometimes difficult? And the second question, why is the cross such a perfect picture of humility? I don't want to give you any answers there. I want you to think through that question. I want you to write your answers down. Maybe discuss them with your spouse or your kids or your parents, or your friends. Why is the cross the perfect picture of humility? Take some time today to, to think through and discuss that question. I, I have no doubt in my mind that you will grow as a believer by doing it. And as you do that, church family, I want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you.